Hello guys, welcome to a very special edition video where I am answering your questions. I have collected them on Instagram, YouTube, Patreon, not so much on Twitter. I got way more replies than I expected, so thank you so, so much to every single one who wrote in. And since so many of you guys had asked, I think we should begin with a little room tour. So this, hold on. This is the space where I shoot all of my videos. It's actually just a room in a regular apartment. Here's where I store some of the ingredients and things I need for cooking. When I'm shooting, this is where I put all my prepped ingredients. This is just a fridge. This is my sink because I don't actually have water in this room. This is the work area. My camera is usually on this tripod. This is where I can see myself. This is pretty much the entire lighting setup I'm using except for like these lights and this little top light that is not on right now. Some sticks and tripods that I'm using, a little bit of gear, a little bit more gear. My guitar and my bass, I love making music, but I don't get to do it so much. And sometimes when I'm editing videos late into the night, I'm sleeping right here. When I started the channel, I used to live in this room and shoot in the kitchen. I'm gonna show you in a second. Now I live with my girlfriend and I turned this into my YouTube cave, which was a very good idea. Okay, some of you know my roommate AP from my videos. This is his room. He also does YouTube videos sometimes, as you can see. This is the actual kitchen of our apartment where I usually test all my recipes. This is our living room where we both edit videos. This is my desk where the not so interesting part of my channel happens. Yeah, so my studio is like this constant work in progress. I'm gonna give you guys an update in a few months when it looks more like the studio that I would like to have. But for now, let's answer some questions. Let's start with an easy one. How old are you? I am now 31, I'll be turning 32 on June 3rd. What languages do you speak? I grew up speaking Russian and German, then I learned English in school like everybody else, and I studied Chinese in university. What inspired you to actually study the Chinese culture and why do you like the lifestyle food there so much? So my interest in China, Chinese culture, Chinese language doesn't go back to like this one big event or anything. It was a natural progression, which started uh, in high school when I liked to watch Dragon Ball. Uh, I know it's Japanese, but that progressed into an appreciation for the cultures of East Asia. And eventually I decided to enroll in Chinese studies at Berlin University. Are there any things you don't like at all in regards to food yes i think some heavily fermented foods definitely take some getting used to for example natto i i cannot um and like some fermented fish things are also pretty tricky and then there's this whole category of like innards and offal offal and organs for example pig brain it like it irritates me on two levels i don't like the flavor at all and also the texture just really freaks me out but i actually never ever say no to a new dish even when i think i'm not gonna like it fucking soy boy can we talk about this for a second why is soy boy an insult like what's wrong with soy What's your favorite one spice? MSG, probably not the answer you're looking for. I think if I only had to pick one spice, it would be cumin. Best Asian supermarket in Berlin. Go Asia. Kannst du das auf Deutsch vorlesen? Yep. Are there any recipes you want to tackle but haven't because it's too intimidating? Yes, uh, mostly fermentation related recipes actually because fermentation takes a really long time and if you screw up you have to start all over. So these things uh, I haven't really tackled yet. Okay, this one came up a lot. How did you learn cooking? Do you have any formal training? First of all, I have no formal training when it comes to cooking. I never went to culinary school and I've also never worked at a restaurant. I lived in China for some time and when I came back to Germany, I think I was around 25 years old at that time, I was really missing all those delicious foods that I have discovered in China and it was really difficult to find restaurants that would make authentic and tasty Chinese food in Berlin. So with the help of YouTube and a little bit with the help of cookbooks, I started teaching myself and uh, slowly, slowly, slowly getting a little bit better at it. And then eventually only cooking Chinese food all the time got a little bit boring and I started expanding into other cuisines. Has Andong Long Dong. What's up with those awesome Chinese music videos from a few years ago? 
Well, good question. I started doing food videos around one and a half years ago, but this channel is actually 10 years old and you can check out a lot of the weird things I've done before this on, on this channel. One of these things is a series of Chinese language rap videos I did a while back. When I was studying in China, I started this fun project where we would do rap songs in Chinese. It was me and a bunch of friends and Unexpectedly, these videos went super viral in China. They have like a bunch of million views on Youku, which is a Chinese video platform. Even when I came back to Germany from China, we still kept doing these videos from time to time. It was always a really fun thing to do on the side. Right now, we don't have any specific plans to put out new videos, but hey, you never know. What is your favorite German dish? Asparagus. That's a little bit of a spoiler, because something might be coming next week. If you had to pick up just one food to eat the rest of your life and nothing else, what would it be and why? Ah, oh, that's actually an easy one. It would be Chinese fried rice. Why? I don't know, it's just, it's just comfort food and I never get bored of it. Where did you learn to film and cut your videos in such a high quality? I learned everything I know about filmmaking on YouTube and then from practical experience making videos. The only thing I ever studied formally is Chinese studies. Have you ever thought about presenting your dishes on street food festivals? You know what, not really, because cooking at home and commercial cooking, especially for a large amount of people, are two completely different worlds. I have a lot of respect for people who work in gastronomy. I don't think I could do it. Your knowledge about food, culture, history, etc. is incredible. What are the sources? What do you think about Indian food? And which is your favorite Indian food? So my number one favorite way to learn about food and culture is to travel to a place and kind of experience everything in its natural habitat. Unfortunately, I don't get to do that for every single thing I'm cooking on this channel, but that would be the ideal scenario for me. So on that note, do I like Indian food? I love Indian food. I've only been to India once and that was in Ladakh, which is a little bit of a special part of India. So I really hope to be able to travel to India soon and do like a deep discovery tour there because Indian food is amazing. How did you learn about so many Chinese dishes while you were in China? I studied in Beijing for one year, I worked in Shanghai for another year, and then I spent another one year accumulated time traveling through China. So in those three years I was eating a lot, that was my research, I was taking in the flavors, taking in the atmosphere, and then all that practical cooking part came later when I was in Germany, and that was through a lot of trial and error. What is the best fitness food restaurant that we can order food from in Berlin? Fitness food? This guy? No! Which food cultures would you like to explore in the future? Wow! So, 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 so many. I think um, it's really difficult to pick some right now, but I would say Mexico, Vietnam, and uh, it's a bit boring, but Italy. Can you cook Turkish food? There are many things you can cook off the Turkish kitchen. That is true, I love Turkish food, and the good thing is that I can explore a lot of Turkish food in Berlin. So I definitely plan to do a couple of videos on that in the future. How about cooking some Russian food, like pelmeni or akroshka? That would be cool. Yes, I definitely want to do some more Russian food. I, I am connected to Russian culture, of course. My family is from Russia, so do you like coffee? Yes, I do like coffee, mostly for the routine and the stimulating effects. But in terms of flavor, I think the world of tea has a lot more to offer, actually. In the Naruto video, you cook the broth overnight. Did you just leave the stove on or what did you do? Yes, I actually left the stove on overnight. I put a little smoke detector next to it. And yeah, I don't recommend doing that, but that's what I had to do. Have you ever considered going to culinary school? No. Let me explain. I love learning from chefs, but I see myself as a home cook and I like inspiring people to do more home cooking. And I think professional cooking and home cooking, two different worlds. Andy Jamerson is asking, what's your favorite dessert? First of all, I like your channel, dude. Um, and about dessert, maybe just like a good piece of chocolate cake or lemon cake. I actually, unpopular opinion, I'm actually not a big fan of sweet things. Like they're fine, but I'm not crazy about them. Like if you offered me a chocolate bar and a bag of chips, I will go for the bag of chips like 95% of the time. When is pulled noodles level three coming out? It's coming, don't worry. It takes a little bit of time because pulling noodles is very difficult. So bear with me, it's coming. Is this a child cab or is your head so brutal big? It's true, my head is really large. <laughs> 
favorite Mexican place in Berlin, ramen, pizza, favorite Chinese. Okay, here's the thing. I live in Berlin and my kitchen is in Berlin and because I love cooking so much I actually don't go out for food a lot in Berlin. Like I can tell you where to get great pastries in Copenhagen and where to get the best Chinese dumplings in Barcelona but when it comes to Berlin yes of course I know some places but I don't think I'm like the best person to ask these questions. Why did you choose to speak English on your channel instead of German and can you make a video in German? This is a really good question actually. When I got started with YouTube, one of the things that inspired me the most was seeing that some of the big international channels had people from all over the world leaving comments and like exchanging ideas. And I always thought this is deeply inspiring. It's something I really wanted to work towards. I'm already seeing a little bit of that. I mean, I have people from China, from Peru, from Germany, from the US commenting on my videos and I love that. And that's also the reason why I will not be making videos in German on this channel anytime soon because I don't want to leave any of the non-German speaking people hanging. Do you plan on doing a fan meetup in Berlin? Mm, I'm open to it. I would like to, but I would also want it to be something special. Maybe something involving food. So not right now, but definitely in the future. What are your roots? You look a little bit Middle Eastern. What's your favorite Middle Eastern dish? Haha. <laughs> so my roots are Russian, Russian Jewish to be precise for the most part. I do love Middle Eastern food and my probably favorite dish would be Fateh. Straight Up Eats is asking, you're an inspiration to us foodie YouTubers. Can you share more about your process of starting your YouTube channel and how you build your audience up to this point? Straight Up Eats, first of all, I love your channel. You have really cool recipes. For the first year, it was basically just uploading a video and getting like maybe three, four, five hundred views at the most. And I did all the like SEO and playlists and all those strategies that you can do and they helped a little bit. But you know how sometimes people say just do what you love, like show your passion and the people will come. That's sort of what happened to me. But honestly, that first year was the most difficult one because I was putting so much work into those videos and the numbers weren't like crazy. But the reason I stayed persistent is because I have seen a lot of YouTubers grow and I know that this early grind is something almost every YouTuber goes through in the beginning. Eventually, hopefully something will happen and once you get the ball rolling, then I think you have a lot more control over how well you're doing. Mark, my buddy Mark is asking, what are your goals with this channel, mid and long term? I love your question, let me tie it together with the next and also last question of this Q&A. What is your main source of income? Are you a full-time YouTuber? My main job is producing videos, videography. Um, remember those funny Chinese rap videos I mentioned earlier in this video? Yeah, I was a complete amateur then, but right around the time when I was graduating university, a Chinese ad agency saw those videos and for some reason they offered me a job and not just a job, they hired me to run in-house video production for, for a real legit ad agency in Shanghai. To this day, I am extremely thankful about that. I worked there for one year and I got to learn on the job. I was also very diligent about it. I spent every waking minute researching how to make videos, how to actually be good because I was of course suffering from massive imposter syndrome, but in that case probably justifiably so because I actually had no idea how to do professional video production. So I worked at this Chinese agency for one year, then I went back to Germany and started my own little video production agency with three friends. We literally started in this room, cold calling hotels and asking if they needed videos. And after about four years, it grew into this like really legit company. We had this fancy office, we had employees and interns. And so the business part was going really well. However, and that's a whole story for another video. Just let me say it wasn't for me. So long story short, I sort of sold my shares and by no means did I get rich from selling my shares, but I had a little bit of money to just take a break and recover creatively. So I spent one summer not doing very much, just hanging out, traveling a little bit and watching a lot of YouTube, which is something I always loved doing. And I can actually specifically point to three YouTubers that I saw that were, that had such an infectious creative energy that pushed me to say, you know what, I'm gonna do this. I've been playing with this idea all my life. I think I'm gonna try this YouTube thing. 
And those three YouTubers were Al Mills, Alex French Guy Cooking and Andrew Huang. And what really worked well for me is I had no job. I had to quit because, you know, I left my agency and I had a little bit of money saved up and I had video production skills that I have built up over the past five years. So as of now, I still do a lot of freelance video work usually around one to two projects a month. And that's actually pretty challenging because doing YouTube already takes up more time than a 40 hour a week job. And then I have to do freelance projects on top of that. But I'm super thankful and lucky to all of you guys for subscribing and helping me grow this YouTube channel because now with the help of everybody over on Patreon and with a little bit of Google ad revenue and sometimes brands who reach out to me, something coming next week, I'm slowly beginning to reduce the amount of freelance work I have to do and I'm focusing more and more on YouTube. I really am super, super grateful that I have this opportunity now. I don't wanna mess it up, so I'm working as hard as I can. So the midterm goal for this channel is for me to go full-time YouTube, to be able to put 100% of my creative energy into the videos I put out on this channel. And the long-term goal for this channel is still pretty vague, but it definitely involves more traveling. Ideally, I'd like to pick out a bunch of interesting foods, then travel to the origins of those foods, explore those origins, and then kind of compile everything into this video that teaches you not just about food and recipes, but about where food comes from and what it means to the people who came up with it, if that makes any sense. I told you it's still pretty vague. All right, I know this was quite a lot. If you're still watching, thank you so much for sticking with me and for supporting this channel so much. I really appreciate every single second you guys spent watching my videos. I hope to be able to make more and more and never stop. There are not one, but two videos coming next week. One of which is a cooperation with a really big brand. I hope you guys will like it. I tried my best. And yeah, without further ado, I hope to see you guys in the next one. This video was brought to you by Undong's epic Patreon supporters. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the bell for weekly food inspiration from all over the world.